This lesson is about aliases and functions. I've touched on both of them before, but this lesson includes a few more details because they can be very useful and they can be confusing. An alias can be used to create a new command from an existing command. Quite often it's used to specify command line options that you use a lot. I remember my very first alias from years ago. It defined the letter L as a version of LS with the L option specified, which lists the file and directory names with permissions and whatnot displayed. You can define that alias this way. Now these are not the back ticks, these are the normal single quotes. But now, every time I enter the letter L as a command, I get LS with a L option. Aliases are usually defined in ETC bash RC and in dot bash RC in your home directory, so they'll be defined every time you log in. If you want to look at the aliases you have defined, just enter the alias command without an argument, like this. As you can see, I have redefined LS so it always runs with the A and the F options. The F option causes each file name to have an extra character added to the end of it to indicate more information about it, whether it's a link, executable, or a directory or whatever. The A option instructs LS to display all of the files, so hidden file names are always displayed. In Linux, a hidden file or directory is one that has a period as the first character Character of its name. In your home directory, dot bash profile and dot bash rc are both hidden files. If you execute ls with the a option in your home directory, odds are that you'll find quite a few hidden files. Anyway, if you want to get rid of an alias, you can do so with the unalias command this way. Now these are the aliases that are defined. Notice the alias named go. All it does is execute a script named Go, but it doesn't change the name or provide any options. But there's a good reason for doing it this way. Here's the script. It's a convenience for changing the current directory. All it does is read the name on the command line and switch to a directory by that name. I change this script from time to time to contain the name of a directory containing the files of a current project. But if I were to execute this as a normal script, this wouldn't work. That's because the shell spawns a new shell to run the script, so that shell would change directories, then quit running. The current script is left right where it started, so no directory has been changed. However, running the script with a period in front of it causes the current shell to execute the script instead of spawning a new shell to do so. It's a simple trick, makes it possible to have a script affect the current shell for such things as changing directories or setting environment variables. This is known as sourcing the script because it's sourced into the current shell. Functions are not used as often as aliases, but they are used when the command you want to define is complicated enough to have several lines or some conditional execution or whatever. Let's take another look at the path munge function. You know enough about scripts now to see how it works. The set command lists everything that's defined in your shell, including any functions. This function adds a new directory name to the path, but only if that name is not already in there. The first line of the function is an if statement. Notice the exclamation point immediately following the if. That's the not operator, so this conditional is if not. In the conditional expression, the echo command pipes the contents of the path into a program called egrep. Egrep is a version of grep that uses an extended form of regular expressions and is used to search for the directory being already in the path separated from anything else by colons. That is, if anything comes before or after the found string in the path, it must be a colon character. If it's not found in the path, the next if statement executes and determines whether to add the new path member on the front or the back. 
Okay, that's about all we're going to do with the fundamentals of shell scripts. It's a full-blown language, and some very sophisticated programs have been written and are being written as shell scripts. The next lesson begins with some of the system scripts and explaining what they do and how they work.